It was nasty work, the white fragility that was happening in there. Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome back to my channel. It's your girl, Simone Nicole here, back at it again with yet another video. And today is our first sit down think piece of the year. I know y'all missed me. <laughs> and I miss making these videos. I have so many in the bank for this year, but I wanted to start out strange enough with talking about love is blind, because as we all know, I love to take a little pop culture moment and distill it down into lessons that we can take away from it, what it says about our society, blase, 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 and the girls like to chat and have a good time. If you would like to see more of these videos, they're all in a playlist. And if you would like to see more of me, then subscribe. I, I always forget to tell people to subscribe, but come over here, we're chill. So we're here to talk about Love is Blind, and by the title, you can see that I specifically wanna talk about AD, because I feel like the treatment of AD has flown unbelievably under the radar, and we're too too busy talking about a thousand other things and not talking about to me the glaring mistreatment of this person from this show and how that mistreatment is gonna let me talk about something that I've been scared that I've been scared to talk about for a very long time but I'm gonna put on my bigger panties we're gonna talk about it today if you have never watched love is blind it is a reality show that is on Netflix now why would you mommy is working do you want the tiki cat or not? Mommy is trying to keep a roof over our heads. Mommy loves you, I will kiss you, but I have on lip gloss. Now get the hell out of here now. The show's premise is that a bunch of young, supposedly, single strangers come together, are separated into two different sectors, one being the male, one being the female sector, and they date each other without ever seeing each other and trying to see if they can fall in love with each other, even though they don't know what each other looks like, to prove whether or not love is blind even though season after season we have proved that love is indeed not blind, but whatever. And then crazy, at the end of all of that, they are supposed to get married. But the reason why we're here today specifically is because this season is extremely messy. Also, at the time of recording this, I ha have only made it to like episode 10, I wanna say. No matter what happens, it still doesn't justify any of the things that I'm about to talk about. Because so much of the experiment is done behind closed doors, none of the guys know what the girls look like. So when all the couples come together, we only have one fully black couple this season. Everybody else in the cast that has made it through and is coupled is white. So when they all come together, everyone is ogling over AD. AD looks like this. And she is engaged to Clay, who looks like this. Clay doesn't really matter. He'll come up for a second, but whatever. At first when she came out and the way that the men reacted and how like, they're like, damn, like AD looks good. I was like, wow, how wonderful is it to see a black woman, specifically a black dark skinned woman, be the subject of adoration and be the subject of affection. To my um upset, that quickly devolved into outright disrespect. Another one of the couples, Jimmy and Chelsea, were talking and Chelsea in this show is definitely known to be very insecure and seen to be by the audience to be very insecure. And Jimmy is just overall a piece of shit. In my humble opinion, Humble opinion. He makes comments to Chelsea, who is clearly a very insecure person, about how good AD looks. Chelsea's response, call across the room to AD and say, damn AD, how'd you get that ass? No one at any point was like, yeah, let's not, let's not be like ogling at this woman. Let's not do too much. No, no, no. In fact, Jimmy came over and left his fiance, Chelsea, to talk to AD. Now we move on to another part in the night, another set of couples. Mind you, I mentioned before, only three people in this entire situation are black. AD went over to hang out with her now fiance, Clay. Jeremy was telling AD about how Laura had said that he should bean dip her. Bean dip, according to him, which is a term I and like, every other person on the internet that I have seen has never heard of. The definition of bean dip is when you smack somebody's titty down and then back up again, and that's a bean dip. And Laura said, yeah, whenever you meet AD, it will be funny if you bean dipped her. And imagine my surprise when everybody else got upset, but one, Notably, but Clay, her fiance. Don't do that, Jeremy. No, absolutely, absolutely not. And very, on a very, very small scale, AD. 
It's very interesting to me that AD has now been ogled at, made the subject of attention because of her body in the center of a room where we're essentially meeting strangers. No one thought anything about that. Her standing up for herself was nothing in comparison to the reactions of everybody else that had, in my opinion, done her wrong. Chelsea was off crying in a corner and having everybody comfort her because how dare Jimmy be so disrespectful to her by saying that about another woman and poor poor Chelsea then again Jimmy oh poor me because I'm embarrassed for saying that so I'm gonna leave and then Laura is mad and calling Jeremy childish for bringing it up and then when AD was like well why would you tell him to do it at all because that's highly inappropriate she's like oh he's such a child like why would he ever bring that up like truly it's just not that big of a deal you telling your fiance to sexually harass a woman is not that big of a deal. The unbelievable white fragility in this room was dastardly. I, that's, that's, the only, that's the only word I could think to describe it. It was nasty work, the white fragility that was happening in there. And the fact that this woman at the center of all of this has been, in my opinion, the victim of all of y'all's wrongdoing and y'all's actions but everybody else is more upset than the victim themselves. Quickly, 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 all of this devolved into becoming very anti-black, very colorist, very sexist. And I'm just like, how do we get here? So that's what we're here today to unpack because for me, seeing so much of myself in AD and then furthermore being set off by the lack of consideration on her part, the lack of empathy, and then their bullshit ass apologies. I personally was very triggered sitting and watching the episode because it shows a handful of cracks within our society that black women can fall through. This particular subset of black women that myself and AD happen to occupy gets a little dicey when I start to talk about the treatment of said type of black woman. I knew that a lot of the comments were going to talk about how she clearly wanted that type of attention because of the way that she dressed. She didn't push off the attention. I knew that that was going to be the conversation being had, but I saw myself in those situations, especially when someone was offering her one of their half-ass apologies, her response was, it's okay, I'm used to it. Because the reality of a woman that looks like AD or looks like myself, and let me speak very plainly, a dark-skinned black woman with an over-sexualized body type, what we call nowadays the BBL body. When you have that, it makes people think that they can treat you differently. And when they treat you differently, because of the societal norms that are in place, it makes it very, very difficult for you to feel like you have any leg to stand on when trying to stand up for yourself. I saw in her, her one, one, having to stand up for herself was very disheartening to see and no one else stepped forward to do so. And I know for a fact that it's not just because as black women, we are seen as more capable, not needing to be stood up for and all of these things, but especially the subset of being a dark skinned black woman, the inherent bias with dark skin is that you're tougher, you can take more, you don't need anybody to stand up for you, and you got it. Amongst a million other assumptions inherently made about you, not just in American society, colorism is an issue globally. So let's not act like it's just black Americans speaking on colorism. It exists in every single culture across the globe. She had to stand up for herself and even in her standing up for herself, she had to regulate how she did that because she would have fell into the angry black woman stereotype if she went too hard and took things too far because it was all just a joke. The learning to accept harassment as a compliment is the most dangerous work y'all have done as a society that I have seen yet. I'm gonna drag that. I dragged it just to make the point that I'm trying to make. It's so disheartening to not only have to ex experience it, but to see it mirrored back during that episode was just heartbreaking that she had to smile in the face of harassment because like she said, it's okay, I'm used to it. And on top of that, not just am I used to it, I'm gonna be sweet when the harassment is taking place because this is supposedly a compliment. In this day and age, we always are talking about self-love and self-acceptance, but with self-love and self-acceptance also becomes freedom of self-expression, right? When women that look like AD or I, expressing ourselves through our clothes, through our makeup, through our hair, whatever, it is perceived in a completely 
different way than it would be on someone that does not look like us. I knew that the comments were gonna talk about the fact that she wore that dress. So what attention did she expect? When it's just like, if you put that dress onto a different body, y'all wouldn't have been stopping traffic like this and it wouldn't have been as big of a deal but because she's simply existing in the body that she lives in it has now given people permission to comment on her body to ogle at her to make her the subject of what y'all call adoration and what i call harassment i hate that people automatically jump to well if you don't want those comments made about you then you need to cover up because that is a very very dangerous rhetoric to participate in because what it communicates to people that that do not have a certain type of body is that your body is inherently sexual so in order for you to avoid being sexualized and pushing your devilish sexuality onto others you need to cover up your body I don't understand how y'all don't understand how dangerous that is and how that directly plays into rape culture amongst a million other things hey y'all just popping in to quickly address some of the more recent comments I've been getting on my TikTok, and that is people saying that not to be a party pooper but ad sexualized herself i also knew that those comments were gonna come i'm an ad stand so i'm gonna defend her no matter what but being for real i think that ad and i just had two separate trauma responses being put in the same situation ad has learned over her life to lead with her sexuality because society has taught her over and over again that that is her top value in this world growing up dark skinned you learn to attach yourself to any part of yourself that people are complimenting because I don't know y'all unless you grew up the way that dark-skinned women do it is kind of hard to grasp that the sheer trauma that it can cause her reaction was to double down and invest in the thing that people keep on telling her is her most valuable asset whereas my trauma response was to cover it up and try not to let that be the thing that people accredit my success or my beauty to and for a long time I covered up my body like I said before two different trauma responses to the same situation like I said I don't think that it'll ever be fair to blame societal issues and the result of trauma on the person I think that we need to take a much harder look at our society and not surprise surprise victim blame I have understood the way that I am perceived since probably around age 10 when I started to develop this body. As soon as I hit puberty, I was very, very aware of the space that I took up in this world. And I was very aware that simply existing and drawing attention to myself with the things that I wore was inherently sexual. And it's very sad that a, a 10 year old had to think about not wearing a certain pair of jeans because I wouldn't want teachers to look at me a certain way. I wouldn't want for people to respect me less or the unwanted attention from little boys which i got constantly now that i look back on my childhood i understand it to be sexual harassment the amount of unwanted touching that happened to me from little boys just playing and being boys was inappropriate at best and a flat out failure of the adults around me to protect me in a situation like that. I went to an all black school and generally in all black schools, there is all white staff or majority all white staff. And we have discussed ad nauseum in our society about the inherent biases from non-black people to black people. So here I am, a little black girl. We all know about adultification and the way that black girls are automatically seen as older, more mature, able to handle themselves compared to our white counterparts. In addition to that, I have this body and I'm dark skinned. So all of these inherent things do not bode well for me because while I'm experiencing harassment, my teachers and administrators are looking at it as if I am a part of it. Because if I really didn't want it, I would have came to them. I would have said something. Instead of just saying, I see little boy smacking this little girl booty, I'm gonna say something to the little boy and not make Simone have to say something to me and let me know that she thinks it's inappropriate. And when I say things like that, I'm sure that the person, you sitting here watching this will feel bad for 10 year old Simone and feel like it was a complete failure and completely inappropriate for that to happen. But the fact is, is that it's rooted in the exact same rhetoric that we are pushing to this day to justify why the treatment of AD was okay. 10 year old me deserved more and grown ass women, including AD also deserve more. In my 
pretty is a choice video. I read a comment and I will never forget it because it was such a good point. And the person said, you cannot love yourself out of patriarchy. And I think it is such a good point. You cannot respectability politic your way out of sexual harassment, out of colorism, out of racism, out of internal biases. You just can't. This is the part that I've been nervous to talk about. I have been wanting to talk about what I'm about to get into for a long time. I just didn't really know how to do it because it feels like a read the room kind of a situation. I feel like I have just noticed that there is this weird thing that has happened lately where it's become okay to bully people and put people down for having a BBL body. The reason why I was nervous to talk about this is because like I said it feels like a read the room kind of a situation or it feels like when a pretty girl is like ah, I'm just so pretty and life is so hard for me because I'm pretty but it's deeper than that for me. In reaction to the bbl body becoming that beauty standard for the end of the 2010s and some of the 2020s we had people then being like you don't have to look like that to be beautiful which is okay but then we've taken it a step further and started to make fun of people that look like that calling people ant shaped and saying that people look horrible and nobody looks like that in nature is a big thing that i hear all the time even though certain people pay to look like that you can't just erase the fact that there are in fact people that do look like that in nature but when you're saying these things you are inadvertently telling an entire group of women that do actually look like that that their bodies aren't realistic and that how they look looks stupid people feel like they're like punching up and even if someone with that body is offended it's like okay but you still have that body so what are you really complaining about like if you are being mean to a rich person it's like okay but you're still crying in your million dollar mansion it's like god damn like my feelings still can get hurt and those comments do hit a lot harder because contrary to popular belief the people that have actually grown up with that body type their entire life are generally a lot more self-conscious and let me break that down for you because that might sound weird but not only is that my actual experience because of how I talked about growing up always being so aware of how I was perceived and how people would treat me and how inherently sexual I've learned that my body is it makes you really self-conscious it makes you want to cover up it makes you want to hide and it makes you feel like any form of harassment unwanted touching unwanted opinion is your fault inherently because of the way that you present to the world right that to me is the definition of insecurity and if it's not enough for me go to my tiktok comment section and see the hundreds of women that are talking about how they feel the exact same way how in their life they have been harassed they have been the subject of attention that they did not want and had to sit there and smile pretty through it or how they have no sense of personal style because they've spent their entire life just trying to cover up their body because they've been told over and over and over again that the way you look is inappropriate and sexual i hate that the reaction to wanting women to feel better about not having a bbl body is to then put down said body and we can't really recognize that we are all victims in the same system the only difference to me in my opinion is access I just don't believe that if people were actually given access and had the money and the time and the space to change insecurities about them that they want to change that majority of people would not take it to me that says nothing about your character other people will call that weakness I don't I think that it is very human to want to be accepted and more than accepted fulfilled in our society because people will say that if you get surgery it means that you don't love yourself i so unbelievably disagree i feel that both can exist at the same time do i feel that people get surgery thinking that changing their outside will change the way they feel on the inside absolutely but guess what it is not my position to tell somebody what they can or cannot do with their bodies ever for whatever reason that person decided to lay down on the table and get the surgery has nothing to do with me or you making fun of them and putting them down because they are victims in the same system that you are in is 
clinical to me. I know that we've normalized bullying and putting women down that look like that because did y'all see peep the whole incident that was happening where there was a woman that went to Planet Fitness and she had turned the camera around and filmed the woman that was literally minding her business. She was making fun of her being like these BBLs have gotten out of control. And when she posted it, people came down on her for making fun of that woman and for being mean. How could she post that? Everyone was so confused as to why she would have the audacity to do that. And I wasn't. I said, y'all bully women with this body every other business day, but then come down on her for participating in the bullying and posting online. Like I said before, y'all think that y'all are punching up when you're talking about women with BBL bodies, but you're not. All of it is problematic. Even the rhetoric that the woman was spewing in the video was like, you got that surgery to be the subject of attention and to sexualize yourself, and you mad when I post you, da 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 you did that to yourself. The way that we unfortunately fall victim to regurgitating the same problematic systems which we exist in and put us all down and using it as a justification for your shitty actions is, I keep on saying it but it is nasty work i personally believe in moving towards body neutrality to me body neutrality is a lot easier of a pill to swallow than body positivity or self-hate i think the body positivity can be a little delulu. I don't think that it's responsible to tell somebody that doesn't appease the beauty standard that if they just love themselves enough and accept their body and love this body that you're in that you'll feel better about yourself. I think that it places too much of an emphasis on how you look on the outside when as I've talked about in multiple videos, how you look on the outside will always pale in comparison to how you feel about yourself. That's why I feel like body neutrality is the best route for so many of us because it takes the emphasis off of the outside and puts it completely on working on yourself, making sure that your internal is good, that your mental is good, because the outside is ever changing. You have a baby, you gain 20 pounds, you go through a hard time in life, you lose 20 pounds. Like your outside is ever, ever, ever changing. So instead of focusing so much on how you look, I think that when you work on your mental, when you work on the inside, it starts to radiate on the outside. I've said this a hundred thousand times. <laughs> I feel like I sound like a broken record at this point. It's so much more important to me to have a good foundation of who you are. Being a loving, wonderful person will always, always, always weigh more and lead to, in my opinion, and I'm pretty sure statistically, but I'm literally pulling that out of my ass, a happier life. That's gonna bring us to the end of today's video. I realized that we literally went from love is blind to body neutrality and self-love and anti-blackness and colors and la 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 la. But you know what? That's what we do here. <laughs> I always wanna foster a community where we're coming here to become better people. We're not coming here to make each other feel like shit. Society does enough of that. We're just here to talk, we're here to grow, and we're here to become the best people that we possibly can. Also, if by any chance AD is watching this, just want you to know, shout out to you. Love you deep. I see you. We are here. Leave clay in the fucking dust and never look back. I beg, I plead. Ciao, anyway, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye. Girl, I get the money with we'll him, make you mine. Oh. If you love me, never feel me, make you mine. Oh. Lonely.